afternoon all. Um, currently New Year's Eve here in New Zealand at the moment and uh, I just thought I'd do a, a last update for the year on um, the old uh, Mark III. Uh, the boost gauge which is down here, it's, a, it's like a three port Mac valve, sorry it's a bit hard to see. Um, I had that plumbed up wrong. I had it plumbed up to the same way as what I've seen on most YouTube videos and stuff, but it wasn't. For me, it was um, it was flowing as it should, but when it was energized by the ECU, it was blocking it off completely. So I think I have that around the right way now. It's in a, a diverted setting, so it should do the job. So that's fixed. Uh, I have nut and bolted the front end, which I didn't do before. Um, finally got around to bleeding the brakes as well, which is something I, I hadn't done since I put the brakes on. Uh, so hopefully they're a little bit better. I changed, I changed the front setup a little bit. For, I, I, I added some little ducting to duct air through the radiator. Uh, although cooling's not an issue in this car, like the, the other day, um, I, had, I was messing around with the coolant system and I, I pulled the um, the plug for the fan off and drove to work and then driving home, it was actually quite hot here in, in Christchurch in New Zealand, it was 29 degrees, it was a bit of stop-start traffic and I had no fan hooked up. But um, the highest it got up to was 92 degrees, inlet temp got up to 39 degrees, but it kept coming down every time I was moving, so I'm more than happy with that, with that coolant system. Um, what else have I done? Oh, drive shaft. I, I started having a look at the drive shaft problem because there is a vibration. And when I pulled it apart, this is what I found. And I'm presuming this is the issue. That there, that chunk there is completely separated. You can see it right there. I'll try and get in a bit of light for you. That there is completely separated. And there's a vibration around about 50 to 70 kilometers an hour. So I thought I had other ones. I've had a look around, but the only other one I've got is this one here. Uh, but they're a different PCD. So I thought maybe I'll be able to put that end on as well, but it's not going to work. The, thread, the, the bore size inside there is different, so I'm going to end up with a vibration anyway. So um, I've found another one, and I've got one on the way, but there's not much I can do until I get that. And a, uh, a small electrical fault. Well, not so much an electrical fault, it was more... I had something draining the battery that, um, when everything was shut off, it was still draining the battery within a couple of days, so I had to pull uh, all of the wiring out of the dash again, which gave me a chance to clean it all up, because it was... Um, something I did when I first started slamming this car together about a year and a half ago so uh, it took a while to find that fault but that was something else that was sorted um, I've been doing a lot of road tuning and, and um, uh, logging you know driving around logging it playing with fuel mixtures and stuff uh, I, I've managed to make take it to two events so far which have been Pretty good. I'll, uh, I think I've got a photo of one of them. I'll, I'll put it up here anyway.
just thought I'd mention as well. It's it's a tight fit getting that car in and out of the garage, especially with the uh, the old camp in the way that doesn't move. There's not much room, and uh, backing it in is even harder. But I haven't scratched it yet. But uh, that, that was pretty good. I mean, it's it's still being tuned. It still has issues, but um, it was good to get out in it. Uh, I drove to work the other day. I, you know, early in the morning. It was raining. It was cold. So I managed to drive to work with the heater on, the wipers on, the lights on full, and had no issues whatsoever. Uh, it's a bit of a handful in the wet actually. Um, it takes up most of the road. But uh, good, good fun. The rear tyres don't help, but the LSD definitely helps with that. Um, and since then, I've I've been rectifying a few issues. So some of the issues that I've fixed are the fuel tank itself. Uh, the fuel gauge never really read right. The fuel sender was way off. Um, we were getting low on fuel and having fuel surge at around about a quart of tank of gas. So I drained the fuel and then um, drained it down to where it, where we were starting to have surging issues. And then I pulled the tank out and then tipped that into another container and it was pretty much bang on five litres. So we were having surge when there's still five litres of fuel in the tank. So I pulled the pump apart, which is an in-tank fuel pump. I cleaned it all up and I changed the feed and return pipes for um, EFI hose and that seems to have fixed it. So I tested that by... Um, draining the tank all the way down to what I think was maybe one and a half or two litres and took it for a drive and there was no problem whatsoever, had no surging, so that's fixed. So thanks for watching all. Um, I know it's a bit hit and miss with this thing, but it is what it is, you know. It's I'm actually quite proud of it. I when I took it to a, a, a show the other day or a couple of weeks ago, um, it's quite overwhelming because I've only ever paid all I've paid for someone to do on this is put 90 degree alloy bends on the radio on the intercooler. Everything else I've done here in this garage, uh, I've not paid anyone to do anything. Either. I've just had a go and done it myself. So I am proud of it. It will be good when it's all legal. And then uh, maybe get on to the next one. Thanks for watching. Happy New Year, everyone.